Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. Um, I just want to start off by saying thank you all for um, loving me and supporting me and letting me tell my story. Um, and I do have to say I'm not glamorizing, glorifying, or any of that with prison, drugs, any of that. I'm a recovering heroin addict of five, June 8th will be five years. So I'm, I take my recovery very serious. I've worked very hard to uh, get to where I'm at. I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be. Uh, but I've come a long ways, no relapses or anything. But anyways, the title of the story is When I Almost Died. Um, I, I'll start off by saying I lived in a ghetto. Uh, we had just moved there. Um, was into heroin and didn't know nobody. It was kind of scary at first, but, you know, I always... People that get to know me know um, I'm pretty cool. I um, I don't mess with the drama. I stay to myself. I stay in my own lane. But anyways, um, so just moved into the ghetto. Started to get to know a few people. Found somebody to buy drugs from that, you know, was okay. And anybody that knows me, when I was... Back in my addiction, I was a type that, okay, whatever you're selling me, whoever's selling it to you is the bigger person, and I want to get to them. That's just how it was. So, one day I uh, was introduced, I, I, well, I think it was on an accident, to the main person. Well, he liked me, you know, as friends, hustlers, whatever. Um, he liked me. Uh, and knew what I was doing to get my drugs. And what I was doing to get my drugs, I was I was stealing. Um, I'm not going to say where and how and all that stuff because it's wrong. I'm just telling you my story, y'all. How I used to be. Um, so anyways, uh, I met him and he had some really good stuff. And he would sell it to me like what you call... Um, you know, uh, dope boy price. Um, so anyways, um, he was my main person. I always went to, well, one day and how we got close is he knew I was, like I said, he knew I was still, and he was like, well, let me tell you what, if you do, if you go steal this for me, I will, ha I will give you two grams of heroin and on top of buy that from you. And y'all, like I said, I'm not going to say what it, what it was or where it was at or whatever. But four hours later, I had it. And he was amazed. Like, it, he was in awe. Because it, it was a big item. But anyways, um, it all started like that. So we had a, you know, relationship. Uh, not no, like, intimate relationship, but friend relationship. Um, respect. So months went by, and one day uh, he got a batch of heroin, and it was green. Green, y'all, green. I'm like, what's up with that? And he was like, oh, you know, da, da, da. well, being the addict that I was, as long as it got me well and high, I didn't care what color it was. So I did some. Did it for about a week straight, green heroin. And then he got his regular batch in. Well, the following week, I started feeling really sick, like I had the flu. And and then another few days went by, and it felt like a house was sitting on my chest, y'all. Um, this story is really hard to tell because it, it's so personal. But I wanted to help somebody, you know, in, in any, any type of way. I want, I, I want to help people uh, in some way or another. But, uh, and I remember I was always freezing. I was so weak, couldn't eat, 
couldn't get up, couldn't hardly breathe. I smoked, couldn't smoke a cigarette because I couldn't inhale it. Um, and I would always sit in hot, scalding water. Um, I went to the hospital. The hospital was like, well, one of the hospitals, the first hospital I went to, they were like, ah, oh, you just got the flu. And they gave me a pain shot and sent me home with some antibiotics or something. Well, no, that didn't get me better. A few more days went by and it was just getting worse. And y'all, I was still, I mean, I could barely do it, but I was still out there hustling, uh, stealing uh, for drugs. Cause that's how I got my drugs. Um, at this time, that's how I got my drugs. Um, so one day I remember, um, being at home and I just couldn't take it no more and called the ambulance and they took me to another hospital. Well, that hospital, y'all, I go in there for, for, I can't breathe and they do a, you know, a pap smear. What? And they end up, they end up telling, telling me that, you know, what I already knew, well, you need rehab, blah, blah, blah. Um, they just thought I was there for drugs. I told them, I kept telling them, I have my own. I don't need your drugs. Well, they sent me home. But while I was there, they did a bunch. They took a bunch of uh, blood and a bunch of bottles. And they sent it off, I guess. But anyway, I went home, still sick. I would, I remember getting in the bathtub and I was so sick. Um, y'all, I would stay naked with a, with a cover wrapped around me and I would go to the bathroom, run all hot water, get in it. Cause I was so cold, like to the bone. And I remember being in there one time and me seeing my life flash before me, like, I seen me as a little girl. I seen my kids around my casket. I was hallucinating. I seen my kids around my casket crying. Well, the next day, I could barely make it, but that's how I, that's how I had to do it. And I was out stealing, trying to. I get this phone call, and I don't never answer phone calls. I don't, I don't know who's calling, um, especially that particular number, because I knew it was like you know something to do with I don't know. Anyway, I never answer them type of phone calls, but I did. I answer it, and they they say my name, and they they say, "Are you okay?" And I'm like, "I can't." I mean. I, like this I couldn't get enough air to even talk that's how sick I was and I was burning up with a fever they said where are you at we're gonna send for an ambulance right now I'm like I have a ride I'm coming right now well y'all I get to the hospital and They don't know what's wrong. They know I am um, septic. And septic means I had a staph infection in my whole bloodstream. Y'all, my whole bloodstream. But they didn't know what else was wrong. And I kept telling them, my chest, my chest, my chest. Well, they kind of treated me like crap. They did give me one... Uh, and I told him, I said, I just did, I mean, I literally did a half a gram of heroin before I went to the hospital. Didn't even feel it. Um, they gave me one pain shot, which kind of helped the, my chest pains. Well, of course I was being admitted and they were running tests while I was still in the emergency room waiting for me a bed upstairs. Well, they end up I was in a regular room at first, at first, and then they I would ring for like pain medication because y'all, I was in so much pain. I, I, I was in so much pain. I had 
6.1 temperature um, when I got to the hospital. So they was trying to get that down. So um, I remember the next day, the two head doctors, because they, they work in like teams at this particular hospital, and the two head doctors came to the foot of my bed and they said, Oh my God, we are so sorry. I had, I was septic in my whole body, my whole bloodstream. I had endocarditis on my heart valve, which every time my heart valve, my heart was pumping out blood, it was pumping blood clots into my lungs. And I had so many blood clots in my lungs, they didn't know how I was alive. Sorry, I had pulmonary embolism in my lungs, endocarditis on my heart, and septic. And the doctor told me, your daughter, because I was living with my daughter at the time, your daughter would have found you dead if you wouldn't have came to the hospital today. Yo, when I'm treated, when I was treated like that, I wouldn't go back to a certain hospital. But I knew I was dying. At first, I, I thought it was like, um, uh, just like the flu or whatever. But no. But make a long story short, they put me in ICU. They didn't know if I was gonna make it or not. Um, but when I tell you I'm a warrior, I'm strong, <laughs> I'm strong and God wants me here for a reason. So I was in ICU for 36 days and, um, after 36 days, thank you, Jesus. I was better. Um, I still uh, suffer uh, uh, like heart palpitations from having that um, heart infection. And um, my lungs will never be the same because they have scar tissue in them. But y'all, like I said, that's one of the stories. Yes, this one of me almost dying. Um, I'm not glamorizing drugs. I hate drugs. And I don't hate anything, but I hate drugs. I wish they would just all go away. I'm not glamorizing drugs or prison or any of this. I'm telling, I'm, I'm simply telling my story in hopes of saving so many people in different ways and for you Felicia's and and Karen's out there it's okay if you don't like this channel it's okay if the story doesn't hit you it's okay but let me tell you what I know this world is filled with drugs and people suffering doing drugs so I know this my stories will help many many people and I'm not sorry that I have this channel. This channel is here for a reason to tell my story. And if you don't like it, you don't have to watch. Period. Please keep your comments to yourself and respect my channel. And that's all I ask. Um... But for the most part, I'm getting so much love, and I thank you guys. I thank y'all. When I say I love y'all, I love y'all. Man, when y'all tell me your stories about your moms or your dads or your aunts, I'm listening. I'm here for you, and I love you. So, y'all, with that being said, please be kind to yourself.
Be kind to others because you never know what someone's going through. Sometimes lend out a helping hand. Give someone a smile. It might, you never know, it might save their life. Until next time, y'all, I thank you. I love you. God bless you. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye.